Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Advanced Tactics Gold episode number two. So in the first one we went through the opening couple of turns and almost through the third turn. There's not much we want to do on this turn, we're just going to move this guy as far forward as we can. It's always nice to check supply, especially now that the map's starting to fill out a little bit more under our territory. But we can see that there's no problems with moving this guy as far forward as possible. And between the two options, it's always better to get him on the road. In fact, I don't even know how he's moving here. Oh, okay, so one, two, three, four. Versus only moving three, probably because one of these is enemy territory? Or, yeah, okay. So if we move around this one, we get there. And then the road is always better. So, um, probably, I was already saying, we'll probably follow the same philosophy with this guy. So if we move here, we're actually only two hexes from the road, though. If we move here, we're... Four hexes from the same area. So we're going to do that. Disregard my previous philosophy of taking the road. We'll take the fastest route. How about that? And uh, this guy can move one more time, but it would be out of supply. And I'm not... It's such a little amount of supply. So basically, 75% of it would reach him. So we'd waste like two supply, three supply. That's really nothing. But it's also, at the same time, not really worth advancing. Because we're going to capture this oil next turn anyway. And we're not going to capture it no matter what this turn. So, I think that that is everything we're going to do for this turn. Um, let's just double check our production since I want to make sure everything is correct. It's the killer. You just miss one time, one thing. I, I've always said this, um, but it would be really nice if the game provided some kind of warnings if you didn't fully utilize your production or, you know, if there's some other error like that. But that doesn't happen. So, oil, 500. You may think, oh wow, okay, so we're going up by 500, we're up to 6,000 now, and now we're getting 1,000 per turn. How does that seem in terms of, <clears throat> I mean, what is the, what kind of feel do we have for that? Like, what does 100 oil even mean in this game? Is it a lot, a little? Like, is 50 oil enough for your entire army for like five turns? Or is 10,000 the amount it takes for one unit to move one hex? It is very arbitrary. We don't, we have no idea what. <laughs> What the value of that is. Well, it doesn't matter for our trains, so let's move those forward first. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll get to Sendai next turn, and we'll have to make a decision, so that'll be one, two, <clears throat> three, four, five. We won't be able to get to Yanping next turn. Okay, there's, yeah, there's no way around it. We're just going to be one hex short of Yuan Ping, which makes me think, actually, it might be better to just go one, two, three, four, five, because <clears throat> then we'll go one, two, three, four, five, and we'll take Yuan Ping next turn anyway. Um, and because the borders will expand, we probably can go, actually go six. <laughs> we'll get the oil on, that, on the next turn, or six. I mean, maybe we want to try to mosey our way to Yutuan, uh, Yutian. Although Yutian, I mean, it's very unlikely we'll get there. So they've conquered their second city. We are ahead on that count. We have three, and we're not going to be able to get to four, it turns out, but darn it if we don't try, right? Uh, another thing we should consider is what does supply look like? Okay, so here it's fine. Here it's fine. So 60 means it's, it's um, Sorry, so this is 35 and this is 60. So it's 20 to jump into a city and it's 25 to jump into farmland. So 20 to jump into cities or into grassland or plains, sorry. But the farmland actually takes the fields, I should say, take an extra five. This is fields, this is fields. So it's 60 here, which means it's 25 here, which means that we're okay to move there. Now the question is, do we wanna move here or here? I don't really think it much matters. Um, who of these two groups is going to be in charge of... I think actually I will move here because this unit can move here. I mean, there's he'll be out of supply no matter what he does. I might take the 25% penalty to move there. It'll only happen for one turn anyway because as soon as these connect, this guy will supply by rail, ironically. It'll go rail to truck up to Asu, Asju. And then the road, since it's only one hex, one cost per hex by road, it'll just supply him. It, like the supply wants to go here, but what it's actually going to do is move all the way around and over, just because of the railroads. So, 
Okay, so we have the oil here. There's no point in this train sticking around these parts. We'll move this unit directly to the front, drop them off, and then we'll move the train back. Actually, what we might want to do is uh, this one, two, three, four. We want to move here no matter what. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six. We want to move. Oh, no, this guy has to go down here. Never mind. Let's get that oil. That's 70, and then we can move back one. Okay. So that's that guy's done. The, they won't combine. This is a guy on the horse, so he'll move as far as he can. He'll move far, as far as he can. And what we might do, since we have one, at least one train here, is we might move this guy. This will be 15, and we'll need another horse. And we might as well move an extra couple riflemen there as well. So I can move the train here. And I can transfer units to this one. So let's just get everyone but the everyone but the train out. And then what we need to do is transfer using rail capacity, the rail that we have. Um, not to this one, but to this one we want, first of all, another five rifles. Which cost us five times 120. I didn't see, but you probably could have looked. And this will take another 120. So we have 1,400. Now we'll be down to 1,180. Well, 1280, if I can do math. Uh, yeah, so there it is. Now this is a, a 20 and 2 rifleman unit, moving on horse. And this is the one that we wanted to go north, and it's good because it doesn't have as many rifles anyway. So we'll move here. God, I don't know. Are we actually going to connect? It doesn't matter. Unless we connect along this road, we don't get the advantage of coming from the south. So the question is just do I want to lose some supply or do I want to wait? I think I'm going to wait. Well, I mean, we do get the raw faster. Uh, let me just check the production cost of supply. What is it? It's three. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm really getting into the details here. Uh, if we choose to lose like two supply, that's losing six production points but we get the raw a little bit faster, maybe? Moving here. He doesn't have a horse, Never mind. we don't move. <laughs> yeah, this is a disaster. This guy doesn't have a horse anyway, so this guy's gonna move way faster, he'll get to the raw first. This guy might as well just run back and put merge himself back into the headquarters for all I care, because uh, he's not gonna be the, the quickest. Th this is not the way to get this unit to the front by just marching him through the fields. It's definitely gonna be to use rail, to use horses, and now, as we'll see, we can even use armored cars. So let's get this train and start moving home. I don't see any benefit. Oh, okay, there is one technical benefit. If I were to move this guy forward instead, I could get one, I could get this train to split off and take the oil itself. I don't even know if it has the ability to take territory because it has zero ZOC. I've never tried it. I've never tried to have a non-combat unit. Do engineers, I think these guys even have ZOC, uh, zone of control. Yeah, because they have some combat capabilities. They're not good, but yeah, they have worse hit points against infantry. You don't want to use your engineers in combat unless it's emergency because they fight a little bit worse. They fight at two-thirds strength. Um, but uh, worse than that, they cost double. So their benefit is definitely being engineers. Uh, speaking of being engineers, we have enough political points to upgrade my RAWs, and we're kind of, yeah, we probably want to do that. Oil, if I'm if I'm very careful, so I I didn't finish my the punchline of this whole thing was, if I create a new formation, and I transfer, let's say four armored cars, and uh, armored cars can carry troops on the back. So we'll get all the riflemen still available to move with this armored car unit. Each one of these can carry five, but just in case you lose an armored car, I like to keep a cushion. So the most I like to carry with the four is 16 rifles, because I assume that if I lose one armored car, I probably lose at least one rifleman, in which case we're down to three and 15, which that means all the riflemen can still be carried, because otherwise you lose your very quick movement speed. So if you did four and 20 and you lost an armored car and you only lost four rifles, this whole unit moves with its slowest unit, which is now that one uncarried rifleman. So let's see, this is, we're at 6,000. I think it's five movement per hex. 
this is going to be 10 hexes. So with a four of them, we're expecting 200 oil. I suspect, yeah. So there you go. Now you have an idea that moving only four armored cars, 10 hexes, which is, you know, a decent distance, use 200 oil. I plan to have, you know, like 20 of these units. <laughs> and attacking actually costs more, four times more, right? Yeah, it's 20 fuel every time you attack. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of oil that we're going to be using later in the game. But for now, the limiting factor is more raws. And there's two things you want to do with your political points in the very beginning. Well, three, I guess. One, the first one I didn't even think about to mention, but it's really obvious, is your research. F2 or the decision room. Um, we probably don't need to do any research here for a while. I mean, machine guns. Who am I kidding? It would be really nice to start getting machine guns pretty quickly. They do take raw as well, but um, I like to make infantry units with a lot of machine guns. Like like a 4 to 1 ratio. 40 and 10. 40, machine gun, uh, 40 infantry riflemen. 10 machine guns. Now, machine guns are more expensive. They're 250 instead of 100, so they're two and a half times more expensive. And if you just had a unit of 50 machine guns, uh, it might not even perform as well as you think because you need to kind of intermix them with riflemen, and the riflemen hopefully absorb the blows. Every unit fires, but not every unit is attacked. So it's random who you fire at, but um, so the riflemen, uh, the machine guns, no matter what, they're going to hit. However, if you had a whole unit of them, they're also more likely to, to be hit. So uh, if you kind of like, I don't know where the optimal is. For me, I found that the four to one ratio works well. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Do I want to move and take this oil and take that oil a little bit faster? Or do I want to just move my trains back and... So I won't be doing this in the future. I'm going to try to use my trains to manually move my armored cars. Now armored cars moving on trains obviously is a lot more weight than moving a train. So if I try to, let's say, transfer another armored car to this unit, you can see it costs 1,500. So one of my units cost about 12, 120. This one is costing 1,500 to move the same distance. And that's just for one armored car. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit expensive to move. Um, when all of our trains are back, which... Where all are where are all our trains? One, two. Oh, this guy can move. No, no, he can't. Oh, he can move <laughs> one X. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that we've accounted for all six of our starting trains. This train is not going to be returning anytime soon. This is combat train. <laughs> this is <laughs> very unusual to think about your trains pushing troops into unknown territory. <laughs> like, you know, they're in, in a weird way that every hex we move, somehow the guys are getting out and reconnoitering, doing recon, and then they move forward on the train somehow because it is still taking the extra 10 movement points to get in, which means that we're somehow not just plowing forward with the train. So maybe they have, maybe they have to move only at half speed so they have spotters on the front of the train, like making sure the tracks are clear. You know, I mean, it's an unknown. So. <sighs> We're going to have one train back quickly. I don't know what to do. One, two, one, two, one, two. So we're only going to have two trains, which we can see is a pretty severe limit. Now, I think I'm going to move these trains back. I mean, the best case, though, okay, let's do it. Let's do one. I'm going to do this as an experiment for myself. I want to see if trains can conquer um, new territory. <laughs> so the one with the readiness is going to be the one move back. The one 100% readiness can move forward as well. We'll see if he can conquer that oil or not. If not, he goes right home. So okay, now you cannot move forward, so you stay there. Now, Okiyama has its production. We need to shift you to 2030. And you need to shift. You can't even shift. Okay, so now we go back. I think that there's no longer. Yeah, 70. I think this is like uh, 20. No, 
sorry, it's 2520, something like that. So basically we lose on the rounding if we keep pushing that. So what do we want to do here? What are the other options? I don't like to produce vehicles because we get them kind of for free. I mean, it's not a, a good use of your city resources. You can only build infantry and supplies and political points from cities, whereas you can always build another factory to get more vehicles. So I don't want to do that here. Engineers, rifle, staff, probably that's what I'll end up doing is just getting more riflemen. And uh, I should always, I, I'm going to mention this at least once. I want, I'm sure I mention it once every series. It's always better to front load your supply production because supplies themselves do not take supplies to maintain, but any other unit you, do, you build takes supplies per turn. So if you can just front load your supply usage and then just crank out troops, all the turns that you didn't build those troops, you save that much on supply. So it's not a bad idea to do this, but we might even be doing something like Oh, I can't do political points because, yeah, it'll be a weird fraction. So maybe I'll just do 1,200 supply directly, which means that, I mean, what's our supply at? Uh, we're at 1,406, but it's good to get up a stockpile of probably like 10,000 before war really begins. So we'll try to build that stockpile this turn. And then after this, we'll probably switch to rifleman production again. I mean, we could even do 50 and 50. Is this... Six, six, six. Okay, so it is moving by six. It's okay, good. So this is legit. That's an 18. I, I'll take the 18 rifleman. 600 supply is still pretty good. Um, exactly countermanding. <laughs> exactly not countermanding, but contradicting what I just said about front loading supply. And these guys are just following the prescription the 4010 to 2030. This guy's 4010. We'll get that one next turn. We'll get that one next turn. Okay, good. All right, so I think we can advance another turn, and we spent like 15 minutes just doing this turn, so things are going to start to slow down. Eventually, we'll surely get to a point where we only do one turn per episode, which is going to be... I mean, I guess I could do some editing. I probably should, so that a lot of the decisions I think about, I make off camera. That would be good, but that's going to require editing, and I, I dislike editing, so... Okay, one thing we should be remiss if we forgot to do is with our political power, our political points, whatever you want to whatever they're called, we actually can build this raw. And then we can move this guy to the front quickly. Oh, speaking of people moving move to the front quickly. Yeah, I think we do this. We do need this. So now we're up to 120 gain, which is quite good. This guy can start moving forward. And this guy, we don't have enough raws to do what we want to do right now. But actually, this is this is a really interesting thing. We can move forward here. And we can build one road. Every road we build is going to extend the supply by that much. Wait. Oh, right. Supply from there, but we are actually supplying from here. So you can see it's just too little. Two, three. So let's just move, build one road. That costs us 20 raw, the 20 engineering points we don't really worry about. But now this guy can move a little bit further. So let's do that. Okay, good. So I don't know if that's useful to do. It's going to help these borders push a little bit further, I believe. But who knows if it was worth it to do. We'll probably want a road connecting these eventually anyway. So we'll have a full loop going on to this area. Uh, and then the question is whether or not to build roads even further forward because every road that you build for you is also it's a double-edged sword it can be used by your enemy so okay but i think that that concludes this turn i'm just going to commit to building only political points in my capital so yes hmm I forgot that we actually don't start at war, so they, they have declared war on me. Pretty natural state of affairs. <laughs> okay, so they have pushed pretty far in the south, which I was not expecting. We've actually gotten Sendai just by border expansion, but these are still plus 10 AP. So let's see what happens. Yep, so we can actually take it. Notice that it doesn't actually expand our zone of control. <laughs> it only moves it where exactly we move. 
And that's exactly because of this mechanic with uh, the borders. So let's um, move this guy north then. So we'll be able to get all those next turn. And then I pretty much think we dropped him off at Yongping. And the train comes home. So let's take Sendai. Let's get the... Oops. Oh. It's in the wrong order, but... It's practically what I want. Okay, good. I, you know what? I've got to switch him. i got to switch him. That'll drive me mad. Okay, good. There. It's, there's a precise order to things. Um, this one goes to 0, 50, 50. How are we doing on staff? Let me check that in a moment. Yeah, we're, we need the staff. We're at 88%. Now, this is a little bit strange to think about because our staff aren't really even going to do much right now. I'm just using this number as a metric for how much staff I'll need for my subordinate headquarters when I get to forming those. Because right now, I guess you can think of this as um, the army or the army group or whatever. The army, probably. Tortugasan is, in the, head of a, is the head of an army. And eventually we're going to form little cores. And these cores are actually going to have much more than a couple divisions, so we might even think of them as, yeah, maybe those are the armies and this is the army group. Who knows? Doesn't really matter, right? <laughs> okay, so now, as soon as we take this, damn, I need to take that. I actually have to move out of the way to get it, though. 65. Oh, I think I get it if I just move here. Okay, got it. Now the supply, yeah, there it is. See, it can go this way or it can go this way. So now we're in good shape. So this guy can move as far forward as he wants as long as he stays on the road. <laughs> And now I guess we move here. Let's see, this guy is gonna, he'll get there faster, I believe. First of all, I'm not in supply if I leave the road, right? Correct. But I am in supply as far as I go. This is 83, 84, so five, six, seven. I mean, we'll this will be less than 90 to get there. So I think that is, well, by the way, first things first. Make sure that our city is yeah, let's do it this way. There we go. Okay, good. This is producing now. Very good. All right, and you can merge here. You need to keep moving towards the front. So this is the fastest way. We upgraded this level two. Now you can upgrade into level three, but it's more expensive. I think the cost is double for moving to, from level one to level two. And not only that, but um, the the benefit is the same. So, whoops. Um, you go from, what is it? 20 to 60, and then you go from 60 to 100 for the next one. So you gain another 40, but in some way in like relative gain, you gain much less, like 20 to 60 is three times the gain, 60 to 100 is less than double. So if you think about it in terms of relative gain, it's yeah, it's always better to move everyone to level one first, and then move uh, everyone to level, sorry, level one to level two first, and then level two to level three after everyone else is done. So good, this guy, this train collected his, did his duty, got his oil. And we'll move all the way back. We'll probably separate the rifleman here. I mean, he has to move here no matter what. So we'll do that. It's just really funny seeing this train. So, uh, yeah, we'll move back and this train will move home. Uh, this guy's gonna push along this road. He's also gonna push along this road. And these guys are actually gonna fly because they're tracked vehicles. I mean, they're not just tracked, they're wheeled. They're not tracked. <laughs> um, this will take another 200 oil, but we're doing okay on oil enough right now that we'll suffer that. 
So here's a question for me. If I was to move an armored car, it would be 3,000, which we don't have. Does moving a new train that still has the movement points in, does it affect my... No, it does not. So logistics does not go up. Uh, it only counts rails at the beginning of the turn. Okay, good to know. So that means this won't be won't be counted for another two turns. This one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, good. He'll be counted in two turns as well, which definitely means that this will strategically redeploy a blank division. It doesn't require any points to move it. And I think we'll be moving the train in so that the rifleman can move forward. And I don't, the train only needs to have 80 of its, 80 plus of its, you know, points, and it'll probably go up to 100 anyway. I'm talking about the readiness hit, which, you know, I were at around 70 or 60. Uh, if you start the turn with only 70 or 60, so if you end the turn with like 65 or 70, maybe 65, 60, you don't get all of your movement points on the next turn. So I think the difference is half, it's halfway between 100 and whatever your readiness is. So if I gain, let's say if I had somebody, <coughs> excuse me, end the turn with 50, and then the next turn they start with 75. <coughs> so I don't I only have like 88 action points instead of 100. <coughs> I'm losing it here. <laughs> okay, so this guy is gonna, it's gonna be the one to go up there. Cause he can also, it would be, prohibitive from a supply standpoint to go that way, he'll have to come back down the road. So it's better not to have a, uh, it's better to have a horse person do that. They can do it a lot faster. Now we are gaining a little bit more raws, but I don't think I want to just build roads willy nilly. The raws are gonna be more important for building machine guns and stuff like that. We actually, okay, we don't because we built this one road we don't actually have enough action points. Oh, we uh, engineering points, I think it's still, let's just take a look. Yeah, it is still 80 that we need. So we'll leave him here for a turn and next turn he'll build this raw up to level two. If I wanna build my, if I wanna use my political points as such. I think I do. Yeah, but this guy's gonna move over here to build roads. Yeah, there's a clear line of supply at least if you stay on the road <laughs> until we build a road north. Obvious connection there. It was intentionally missing though to kind of add some interesting, interesting dynamic to the game to force me to build to move an engineer forward. So anyway. Okay, so let's see. Is there anything else we want to do this turn? Let's just double check some uh, production. Good, 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 good. And good, I think. How much rifle? How many riflemen do we have? Twenty-four. We could start moving some of these forward. So, like this one, I can move three riflemen here. Cause my division. Let's do this. Let's um look at one of my favorite things: the battle, uh, the table of organization and equipment, the toe as it's known, the model designer. So we can add, we can actually get NATO counters in, which I mean, they're just, they're better. <laughs> it's way better to see a war game with NATO counters. So the first thing I'm gonna design is this, uh, well, let's first design our engineer group. Should be a big E here somewhere. Let's add information, we'll get engineers. Horses, 20 and two, good. So how this works, it's really a great system. Um, it's a little bit less efficient than if you do everything manually yourself, but in some cases it's actually more efficient. But overall, if you moved everything by yourself, you probably get more efficiency out of it. Okay, so we have our 20 and two. This is what I want my engineer to be, good. So this engineer toe is now available and I can grab this guy, select 
engineer and he oh I, I don't want it to be engineer I want it to be engineers <laughs> first engineers not engineer good so now when I when I click on this guy first he's just a dude with a hockey stick that's supposed to be a, a, a minesweeper but it just looks a lot like a hockey stick anyway so we'll grab this guy change him to this model now he's the first engineers with the NATO counter it's so much better and we have the second engineers so the template I already talked about with armored cars and riflemen, that's also going to be the same template for tanks and 16 riflemen that I'm going to use. I really like this combination. So this is also going to be a, a unit. However, I think I will add, um, I will call this my infantry. I'm trying to think, do I want... Because machine guns cost more production points, I just had this whole discussion about what I should do as far as filling the front with riflemen or filling them. Like, do you want a Schwerpunkt? Do you want, like, strong units in isolated areas? Or do you want, like, defenses all around? If I, for every two rifle, uh, machine gun I build, I'm losing five riflemen. So if I was to build this four to one ratio, it is at a pretty significant a pretty significant cost. It's twenty five. Basically, every let's see, it's ten. Every three divisions I build of this four to one rifleman to machine gun, every three divisions I build is about one division. I'm not getting if I was to use fifty riflemen in every division. So, I think I did the math right. It's like for every 10 you are losing 25 and that means you're losing effectively 15 in the unit itself that's a loss of 15 net so 15 times 3 is 45 it's close to 50 so after three divisions we would lose a whole division so this really comes this is a question I could even do the ratio a little bit like less than uh, 4 to 1 I could do like um, I've done 42 and 8 before I could do 44 and 6. You could do 49 and 1, but <laughs> I don't think that's necessary. Uh, it's almost not worth researching uh, the machine gun at that point. So I'm just going to put a placeholder infantry thing in here. Because I still want it to be on my list. Uh, I, I always forget where the... There it is. <laughs> it's in the middle of nowhere for some reason. So we'll just put that this is, for now, 50 riflemen. But I probably won't use this template yet. OK, so now let's add another one. And let's change this to uh, Armored Scouts, which is what I'm considering my armored cars, although they're, they're quite armored recon, let's say. Sorry. Um, they're quite capable as a, as a combat unit, but eventually when tanks are around, they're really armored recon. I, I think this is the best way for me to describe them. So I'm going to go with the cavalry symbol, but I'm going to put in the background, which I think is NATO 2, the wheels. Oh, I did it the wrong way. So NATO 1 should be the wheels and NATO 2 should be the cavalry. So it's, it's cavalry with wheels. It's nice. So we have... I mean, technically, Armored Recon should be this circle with the slash through it. Do we have that? If I'm going to be really particular about this, does such a thing exist? Oh, well, this is Armored Car right there. So, so probably that's, oh, this is the one I was looking at. But this is Armored Car. So let's cancel this or just... I guess choose this. Oh. Okay, there. <laughs> delete, delete, start over. I, I don't I don't know if it messed it up at all. So we'll just choose this for armored cars. Makes sense. This is what I think this is exactly the division, the armored. We'll still call it armored recon. I don't know. I'll let the people vote. I can do this or I can switch it up to be um I could switch it up to be this with um, wheels underneath, which I guess this is more like Jeep or truck, 
so it probably isn't correct. This is probably the most accurate one, but it's it's fine. I mean, it depends on what we want to do. And I really I love the armored recon symbol. It's I don't know, it just looks cool. It looks better than three little dots below your big oval. So okay, armored recon is going to be two things. The first is armored car. And the second is Rifleman, so we've got 4 and 16. So these guys right on the top of these vehicles. Not in combat, obviously. They jump off and start shooting, I hope. But, <laughs> but at least they move pretty quickly. So Armored Recon. Good. Good, good, good. And now I can actually give this group Armored Recon. It becomes the first Armored Recon. And if I didn't have this exact number it would uh, be supplied for me from the headquarters. It'll like manually, using the logistics available, so in this case the trains, um, it would resupply this. This return thing means that if for some reason I manually somehow moved more than 16 or four, let's say I put 20 riflemen into a group and then I'm like, okay, you're actually gonna become an armored recon now. It would add the four armored cars and it would subtract 20 and take those four to the main headquarters, leaving me with 16. You can also say turn that off so that if you happen to have more units in a group, which sometimes you do want to overfill a group, maybe make it like a, I mean, in a very low level, this is way lower than this game abstracts, but you can think of that as like a reinforced fire team. So you could think of it as like a reinforced squad you have in there or something like that. Anyway. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, that's our groups. And then we can make new divisions. I can make another division right here even. Did I want to do that? We don't have it. Oh, we're gonna have a blank card right here next turn. Two blank cards. So I won't. I'll try not to build too many divisions because it does cost political points. But I can make this new division just for the sake of uh, demonstration. I can make a, a new second armored recon here. I have the necessary armored cars and riflemen here, and we can see at the beginning of next turn they will actually be supplied in here. So I don't have to worry about taking this, hitting T, moving things, you know, I don't have to worry about transferring things as soon as you build, you start using the tow, the models. It's really nice. Now, as I said, there's a small disadvantage, which is namely that uh, you don't have uh, control over where the units go if you don't have, let's say I have like five units of this and I only had like five armored cars, it might distribute one to each and you might think that that's, okay, I don't wanna do that. I'd rather have one fully functional unit and then move to the next one. You know, you don't have control. It could do it any way it wants. Uh, the other thing is, um, it's not instantaneous if you have multiple hierarchies, uh, like if you have a hierarchy system, hierarchical system for your headquarters. So as soon as I get my cores or armies, whatever the next subset of headquarters will be, when this one gets units, it'll get them produced directly. Usually I set the top headquarters, normally how it is gets all the city supplies. So I, I've been setting the headquarters for these. Eventually I can set one city to be the headquarters, uh, I mean headquartered by uh, a, um, a, a headquarters on the front. In which case, whatever the city is producing, so I could get like a combat city, like this one, was it Sendai? Yeah. Sendai could just be a combat city. It could build just nothing but troops and it could send them immediately to the army that's stationed right in Sendai. Uh, that way it doesn't have to go to the headquarters and then back to Sendai. Um, but that's how it'll go with the tow system, is if this unit is missing some people, which is missing everyone, um, its current headquarters is supreme. But if it's later, you know, the first army or something like that, um, the units are first passed to the headquarters. It'll take a turn from the pass to first army. And then the next turn after that, they'll get to the actual division. So there is a, a small delay, which it feels realistic, right? I, I don't, I'm not complaining about that. I think it's a good system because that feels like the way things should go. They should flow through the main headquarters and then dis that, you know, disperses them. They trickle down to the actual divisions and that, that'll take extra time, so. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to call this video to a close here. We're pretty much at the 40 minute mark, so. We will uh, end the turn at the beginning of the next episode, which is always nice to do. So it'll give me a, a chance to make sure I have all the production done or whatever. And then uh, we'll pick this up, and we're very soon going to be at least in sight of the enemy. Hopefully it's a stalemate in the beginning, because the AI will strongly outproduce me. So, I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm already <laughs> really excited about it. So, uh, until the next episode, thanks for watching, and take care.